Hi guys, today we'll learn how to print all the permutations of a given string. So we know that by a permutation we mean one of the many possible arrangements of the n characters of the given string. So if, I, if we have a string of length n, we know that it has n factorial permutations. So we want to print out all those permutations. For example, uh, we have string ABC over here and as you can see, uh, ABC can be arranged in six different ways and we need to print out these ways. So we'll be using backtracking to achieve this. Uh, so to understand it, let us first uh, take a look at this tree, this recursion tree. So we start with the string ABC and what we do is uh, one by one, we fix a letter in the first position. So at level one, you can see that uh, at the first position, first we are fixing A, then B, then C. And uh, after we have fixed the letter in the first position, we go ahead and one by one with the remaining substring, we fix a letter at the second position. And we keep on doing this thing recursively until we arrive at a configuration where n minus one letters are fixed. So once we have fixed n minus one letters, the nth letter is automatically fixed. And once we arrive at such a configuration, we print it out. So how exactly is backtracking happening over here? So we are initially beginning with the string ABC uh, so first we are fixing letter A in first position, from here we are fixing letter B in the second position and finally we have the string ABC, so we are printing ABC. After we have done this thing, we move back to this configuration. So uh, note that in the first case when we were coming from ABC to this configuration, we swapped A with A and we fixed, so by doing this we fixed A in the first position. In the next case we swapped b with b and we fixed b in the second position and then when we went back from here we re-swapped b and b back again and now we swapped c with b over here so we arrived at this configuration and finally when we want to go back again we again now swap c and b so that we come back at this configuration we again swap a and a we come back to this configuration now we want to fix another letter at the second position so we swap b and a so that b comes at the first position now from here we swap a and a for the second position so now b and a are fixed so we print this out then again we go back from here so we swap a and a back again now we are again at back at this configuration now we swap c and a so that b c are fixed in the first two positions and we print this thing out after this we again swap c and a back then again we swap uh, b and a back so that we arrive at a b c again now we swap c and a so that C is in the first position and similarly we go ahead. So given any string, uh, what we do is we one by one fix letters in uh, a certain position and once we have printed out a fixed string, we move back to the previous configuration and we try other solutions. So this is how exactly backtracking is helping us. Uh, so now let us move on and take a look at the C code that is helping us do this, achieve this. So we have uh, a recursive method called permute over here. Now permute receives three parameters, the first one being the string and the other two being the left and the right index of the substring that we want to be permuted. So of course this is the base condition as, it, as you can see when L becomes R, this basically means that we do not have any more letters left to be permuted. So in this case, we simply go ahead and print the string out. Uh, and uh, if this is not the case, that that is if L is not equal to R, this means that we still have some strings left for some substrings uh, left for permutation. So what we do here is, as I just explained, what we do is uh, L is the uh, so L is the starting index of the substring where we want to fix a letter, and uh, so we run a loop for the entire substring from L to R and we one by one in this loop fix the ith letter at the lth position by swapping swapping the two. So once we swap a letter and fix a letter in the first uh, in the lth position, what we do is we have now fixed the letter in the lth position. So we now pass the same string to permute again and now we pass uh, the substring indices as L plus 1 and R because uh, the string uh, up to the lth position is now fixed. So now we want to permute the remaining L plus 1 to R string. And after we come back from this recursive call to permute method, what we do is uh, we swap the Lth and Rth letters again so that the original configuration that we had at the beginning of this iteration is restored. So this is how we are really doing backtracking over here. And we keep on doing this um, for all the characters of the substring that we are dealing with.
<coughs> so to understand this better let us uh, take a look at let us try to dry run this thing so we see uh, basically in the beginning permute method receives uh, a string and uh, the left index is 0 and the right index is n minus 1 so we run a loop from 0 to n minus 1 and one by one we fix all the n characters at the first position and for such a configuration we call permute again and we increment l to l plus 1 so now we work with uh, the string of size n minus 1 and inside this we further keep on going uh, fixing uh, one letters uh, fixing letters one by one and once uh, we arrive at a completely fixed string we print it out once we come back from the this call to permute we swap it again so that we arrive at the original configuration and we move on to the next iteration so let us try and do this for uh, the string abc and see how it uh, really works so we begin with abc 0 comma 2 uh, so for uh, now we run a loop for uh, from i is equal to 0 to i is equal to 2 and as you can see uh, in the first iteration we swap a that is the lth uh, character uh, with the ith character which is that which is a again in the second iteration we swap a and b in the third iteration we swap a and c so at the at the beginning of this iteration we swap a and a and we pass the string abc1 and 1 comma 2 to the permute method this basically means that we have fixed a in the first position and now we want the permute method to permute the substring that begins at 1 and ends at 2 and once we come back from that call we swap a and a back again so that the original configuration is restored now of course as uh, here we are only swapping the same characters it doesn't really see like how the string is uh, shifting into different configuration but when you come to other cases you can clearly see that here for i is equal to 1 we are swapping a and b so now we have b fixed in the first case um, and a c is the substring that is left for permutation so clearly um, this this string is now not the same as abc and once we come back from this call to permute we must swap b and a back again so that we arrive at the original string abc again so that in the next iteration we can swap a with c and uh, once we come back from there we swap c and a again although this is the last uh, uh, iteration so in this case uh, we are not really concerned about this anyways so let us see what happens at level 2 once uh, l becomes 1 and r is 2 what happens then so at level 2 uh, so we saw for the first iteration of level 1 loop we had a condition where a was fixed in the first position and uh, b and c were left to be permuted so now here again we'll uh, run a loop from 1 to 2 and this time in the first iteration we uh, fix b in the first in the second position sorry and uh, in the second iteration we say fix c in the second position so once a and b are fixed c is automatically fixed in the third position so we print it out and similarly once a and c are fixed b is automatically fixed in the third position so we print that out and again we swap c and b back so that we arrive at the original string that we received which was abc and we return from here similarly in the second iteration in the second iteration of uh, level 1 loop we see that uh, we pass uh, bac 1 comma 2 to the permute method so inside this <coughs> inside this we again have two iterations for the first iteration we fix a at the first position in the second iteration we fix c at the second position and we print out b a c and b c a and so on we do this for the third uh, case also where we print out c a b and c b a so now one good question at this point would be how the time complexity of this algorithm turns out to be big of n into n factorial so let us take a look at this recurrence relation so so let us just say that we we only want to uh, calculate all the different possible permutations of the given string so the recur recurrence relation will be written in this manner so for uh, a string of length n what we are doing is we are running a loop from 0 to n minus 1 which basically means that we are doing uh, a task that is taking n steps and for every one of those steps we are doing three things first uh, first one is swapping so let's say that swapping two characters take big o of one time so we have two swap calls so big of one plus big of one 
Now in between these two calls to swap, we have a call, a recursive call to permute method. And we know that we will uh, now at this point, uh, the string that we are working with has reduced in size by one. So we know that we can write this as t n minus one. So now this will become equal to n into n minus one into n minus two and so on. This will go up to one. So this will become bigger in factorial. But uh, as you can see that uh, in the case over here, once we arrive at the base case, once we arrive at the configuration where we have a string to print out, we are making a call to printf. Now this printf is printing out a string of n characters and this is going to take bigger n time. So this is the reason why we finally multiply this uh, uh, big of n factorial with n because uh, at the end of uh, every uh, when we when we have arrived at a given configuration of the string we have to print the string out and printing that string out is again going to take n steps so the final time complexity of this algorithm is actually big of n into n factorial if we weren't printing the string then it would have been big of n factorial but since we have to print the string the complexity is big of n into n factorial so that will be all for the day thank you for watching